Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi sitting in for Alex Jones. And it is the Money Bomb 2015. Operation Money Bomb 2015 is in full scale launch on all cylinders, firing on all operations. And <clears throat> what this is, it is a 28 hour broadcast. I'm here with Dr. Edward Group, and we're going to cover some news right now and then get back to your calls. We're going to talk to Ad in Delaware, Ryan in Arizona, and a few others as well. They want to talk about Fukushima. They want to talk about the mainstream media, a, no, a number of different stuff. Uh, Dr. Group's got a big stack over there that we're going to talk about. Now, first and foremost, it is the InfoWars money bomb, as I said, in 2015. The operation has been launched to reach 400 million people. Alex wants to raise $1 million to reach 400 million plus people through a satellite conglomerate that would be on mainstream television smashing through the lies with the sledgehammer of truth in the alternative news. As in, he's already on television. He wants to have a larger presence because the mainstream media is dying. We know that there's a major shift towards the alternative media, and Alex is already pioneering that. He's going to bring it to television now. So you can go to Infowars.com forward slash money bomb. You can also go to InfoWarsStore.com and InfoWarsLife.com to support it. Your purchases and donations count towards the goal of $1 million to reach $400 million. There's 20% off Super Male Vitality, 20% off Survival Shield X2, 15% off Deep Cleanse. All the flagship products are discounted. A lot of gear is discounted. There's discounted food, storable food, you name it. InfoWarsStore.com and InfoWarsLife.com. Now, Dr. Group, I'm going to give you the floor for a little bit for you to go over some of these articles that you have. You had a stack here and a lot of it's really important. So why don't you just go ahead and dig right in? Well, what I wanted to do is find some information out there. I mean, and this is coming up every single day. I, you know, we are making a difference. People are standing up. And a lot of times it's really hard to find some of the positive news and people call me up and say, you know, what what is going on? I mean, are we really making a difference? It, sometimes it feels like you have all this negative stuff going on. And you don't really hear about all the people standing up and trying to fight. So I wanted to pull and, and share with people some of the really good things that are happening and some of the positive things that are happening. And one of the first things that I have is the U.S. court finds the EPA was wrong to approve Dow pesticide harmful to bees. And this lawsuit was filed in 2013 against the EPA our Environmental Protection Agency, just like the USDA and the FDA that's supposed to be there to protect us, although we know that they're working with the big chemical and pharmaceutical companies. So this is a landmark case. This suit was filed by organizations representing the honey and honey beekeeping industry. So these guys got together, the small honey beekeeping industry, and went up against the EPA and the group specifically challenged the EPA approval of the insecticides containing sulfoxiflor, saying the studies have shown that they are highly toxic to honeybees. And we know by looking at the decline in honeybees and looking at the decline in butterflies that it's all from Monsanto chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, you know, the BT toxin that's blowing up the, the bee stomach. So this is a this is one really, really good thing that, you know, just goes to show that when people do stand up, even small organizations, we can create change. So that's one of the things that I have. <clears throat> the next thing that I have is people are also looking for alternatives. They're looking for ways to combat the toxic effects of things out there. We've been talking about it for years, but individuals are now children just your moms your dads out there that are that are taking control doing research on their own and coming up with solutions this is a solution where a scientist unveiled wireless armor underwear that can protect men's sperm from harmful wi-fi signals that's pretty cool actually the harmful effects of exposure to Wi-Fi and mobile signals has been a problem for a it, long it time sounds now. sounds silly, though. Like, you <clears> laugh <throat> at it. Like, it even sounds silly to me. Like, wireless underwear to protect from Wi-Fi. It sounds like a tinfoil hat for your crotch, right? Right. But, but think but about how true. many men keep their cell phone in their front pocket. And they also sit with their laptops on their laps. Exactly. And it cooks their semen. It, it actually makes you infertile. 
It does. There's doctors that have been on record saying that we, our sperm counts are lower and lower every single time, and it really has to do with the electronic age that's been put upon us. And it's not like we're, ma you know, these guys, we're just making this up. I mean, these are scientific studies that have been done by credible organizations, published in journals, that show a decrease in sperm count when you're exposed to Wi-Fi or electromagnetic radiation. It's funny until it happens to you, and then it's not very funny anymore. Right. I mean, that's the pro that's one of the reasons with depopulation, being able to control the fertility in men and women. And, we, you know, of course, that goes into phthalates and it goes into many other endocrine disrupting chemicals, but also the unseen, which are the electromagnetic frequencies. So these boxers are an innovation that uses a silver weave to protect against, protect against harmful radiation. And since most men carry a smartphone in their pocket and, like you said, put a laptop in their lap, it turns out that it's not good for your fertility. So 70 million couples are affected by fertility issues around the world. 70 million couples. So there is a strong correlation with sperm count. So, hey, that's good news. It's individual scientists, people coming up and saying, look, this is a problem. Let's come up with solutions. And, you know, think about this. I mean, if Wi-Fi can affect your, you think about it in, in the way of a biological human, right? What is your sole purpose at the biological level? Not spiritually, consciously, you know, we all have different purposes, but your human body's purpose is to make another human body. It's to reproduce. If something can shut down that ability, I mean, women's bodies will do almost anything to maintain their reproductive capabilities, almost anything. In fact, you know, mothers die having children. They basically shut down their own systems just to recreate. If something like Wi-Fi can shut down the reproductive capabilities of a woman, what else can it do? If it can kill the key infrastructure of the human body and all these other toxic substances too, what else is it doing to us? And also think about the power of that. All for convenience and capability of not having to plug into an ethernet jack so that we can walk around downtown with our cell phones and have Wi-Fi all the time so we can take selfies. But then, of course, we're not able to do the very function our bodies are committed to doing and have spent the last uh, bazillion years developing to do and treading through Arctic temperatures, swimming through the oceans, building boats and shelters and mud huts and killing boars and getting food for their families, living in caves, foraging, fighting wars getting prepared to go on other planetary systems. Also, we can recreate. And here we are after all of this venture, after these millions of years of what has led up to now to do this, and we're being defeated by Wi-Fi signals. I mean, think well, about that. Well, here's the thing. How I mean, we've progressed. I mean, how, how far we've regressed. Yes. But like we always talk about, there's always a solution for every situation. Sure and not only, look... I mean, uh, yeah, this is just clear. an I'm not article. To be negative. I'm not oh, I know. To be negative. I know. There are solutions to this. I'm saying, though, look at this weird issue that we've come so far with our human species. Yes. And we're self destructing on ourselves. We've had, we could have the utopia right now with all the technological advancements, but instead, we're just killing ourselves with a lot of it. And I, you know, took the liberty to look more into this. And there's not only underwear available now, but people have even created jackets, shirts, pants. Hoods that you can wear, hats are actually made of material now that will block harmful radiation. So, I mean, yes, we do have the body scanners in airports. I wouldn't even mind doing an experiment of putting some of this clothing on. And even though I've never gone through a body scanner and I told, I told myself I would never go through that. Of you, and they but, don't even check their radiation levels in the 90s. A bunch of like, like 100 plus radi radiation experts came together in the 90s and said that those cancer machines are generating, I, think, I don't know what... 10,000 cases a year. Maybe we could look it, look it up. I'm not exactly sure of the numbers, but they warned in the 90s. And they said, this is really bad because we can't check the calibration of the radiation. We can't really figure out what's going on completely. And some of them were like thousands of times higher than they thought. And then, you know, since a, a TSA agent paid $20,000 a month, uh, I mean, a year, a month would be good, probably doesn't know how to calibrate a radiation-based machine, right? Also, right. You, you get out of the body scanners. But then what are you standing next to? The actual mega radiation machine that scans the bags. And they make you stand next to that for like 20 minutes while you wait to not go through the body scanners. There's no escaping it. That is just a radiation hellhole at the airport. And every time I go to the airport, it's just horrible. I can't handle it, man. I, I hear you. I, you know, I, I opt out of that all the time. But it'd be interesting to see if somebody actually bought all this EMP. Yeah. And you can go on, on online and just type in... You know, EM, it keeps you safe. EM, uh, keeps EMF you safe. proof clothing. It doesn't matter that someone on YouTube brought like a massive metal shank through it 
uh, just by putting their arm up. You know, it doesn't matter that you can get through the body scanner with extreme ease and they fail every single test possible. and They've never caught one terrorist. It's for your safety. It gives you cancer for your safety. It's just oh, exactly. massively blasting you with EMF radiation. But anyway, let's continue this. But, but think about it. I mean, you know, one thing progresses to another. You have all the smart meters now in the home. So now they're actually coming out with EMF proof paints for your house. So, yeah, I mean, the thing is. Complex, they have like 15 clusters right. of smart meters. Next, I used to live in an apartment complex where I was on the edge of the building. And they had 20 smart meters in one spot at Ugh. the edge of my apartment for the whole entire unit, the whole building unit, right? Mm -hmm. So it was all on the edge of it. And then, then, then people live in that house, and they're like, well, one of them's not that bad. How about 25 of them stacked up or 20 or 15 or whatever, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, we have to take responsibility because, I mean, we obviously can't shut down the cell phone tower down the road. We can, you know, we can get rid of our, of our uh, smart meter. But, I mean, you know, you're going to have Wi-Fi. You're going to be com bombarded with these things on a daily basis. So you the know, good news is we have solutions. Right now. You've inspired me to take some X2 Nation iodine. Right, and that's one of the best ways to protect yourself from harmful radiations as well. This was in the New York Times, and uh, I'm glad to see this because I've been really trying to get schools as a matter of fact, we started a green team at my kid's school, and we're trying to get the water purification for the whole school, the air purified, change the lightings from fluorescent to LED, and then choose healthier options for the kids to eat during the day. And the New York Times just reported that school lunches are becoming healthier. You know, that doesn't mean necessarily that they're toxin-free, but 80% of the schools offered two or more vegetables per meal in 2014. And the data showed that it was up from 62% in 2000. Two or more fruits were offered in about 78% of schools, up from 68% in 2000. About a third of schools now have salad bars. That's a good, that's good news. I mean, we, that's definitely some progress. And Actually, I've talked to people around the country, and some of the private schools have actually implemented all organic, non-GMO. I've noticed that. The and give gluten-free options as well. They all have organic. It, it's so messed up, isn't it? it? It always seems like the poorest schools are left with the most junk, man. It's just, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's it really hard. is sad. You see, you go into a really, really bad, impoverished area, and everyone's walking around eating Doritos. And then we're bad for trying to help them. And then they say, you know, we're horrible people. It's well, if you, you know, all the welfare and all of the, you know, the pro government programs, if they initiated it to where those would cover baby formulas that were organic and the things that those individuals need, the low income families need, then then it would be a lot better across the board for everybody. But it's almost done by design. You know, the, the, the welfare system and everything the government does gives you the worst food, the worst baby formula. Oh, of course. Yeah, you know, everything. Suck on the teeth. Which ends government. up costing them more money anyway. Well, that's in the fine because then they become slaves and debt slaves to the government forever. You know, it's obviously part of the mission to keep you low frequency, low consciousness. Now, why do you think, I want to go over more of these too. Just, I would hit the headlines over and over and just go through that massive stack you have. Why do you think we have such tangible success in the health realm? I, I feel like every day there's a new story. Every single day there's a new health success. There's a new victory against Monsanto or against some of the CMF stuff, every single time I go on the news, we have a major victory in the health field. Because it's the truth. I mean, it's, it's, it's undeniably the truth. We know for a fact the electromagnetic frequencies are damaging to the body. You know, we come out with solutions for that. We know for a fact. Anybody can go look at vaccines and flu shots if they do a, a, a small amount of research and not believe what they're hearing through mainstream media. We know it's a fact that they dam the amount that is are given to a child is extremely damaging to that child. We know that artificial colors and sweeteners are damaging. There's been enough studies. As time progresses, we know that the damaging effects of pesticides, Roundup, glyphosate, you know, all of these things, genetically modified organisms, people are becoming educated. We're, we know the damaging effects and... We're making progress because people are actually avoiding those things. The big companies never wanted to change. The you know Kraft, Nabisco, yeah. all those companies, Pepsi, who just bought Suja Juice for you know, put a uh, bought a big stake in Suja Juice or organic. All the big companies are realizing now because of consumer demand 
that they need to start going chemical free too because no one's going to buy their products anymore. It's, it's exactly what we wanted and what we've been asking for for years. It's true. We're completely dominating the market and voting with our dollar. You know, I bet we're going to look back in 50, even 10, 20, 30, 40 years and say, what were we thinking? You know, because we feel like we have a responsibility right now to push all this and change all this. And some